what is going on YouTube, get hyped because it is Slam versus Fire in the quarterfinals of Red Bull Bololo 5 qualifiers. If you win here, you have to play one more round to get into the main event. That is going to be against the winner of Bakti versus Barles. We'll have a best of seven in between these two players over here. Fire defeated Stark in the round of 32s. Then, uh, unfortunately, we had an admin win situation there. Fire and the Project Belgium were not able to play. And I don't know the details, so I'm not going to talk a lot about that one. But Project Belgium uh, was the one who got the forfeit, so Fire advanced. Slam, on the other hand... We have seen uh, him beat Sito in a very, very convincing fashion. So this might have been the strongest slam I have seen in a while. And if he can retain that form, he is the favorite to qualify from this part of the bracket. We haven't seen much opposition for Fire just yet. So it remains to be seen how well he can perform against uh, the toughest opponents. But this one's going to be a tough one for Fire if Slam plays the way he did against Sito. Home maps are Haboob, Enclosed, and Meadow for Slam, and Acclivity, Kawasan, and Atacama for Fire. You got Mayans, Tatars, Bulgarians, Saracens, Vietnamese, Berbers, Incas, and Khmer available for Fire. Magyars, Teutons, Chinese, Ethiopians, Britons, Kumans, Franks, and Huns are there for Slam. This is the new game balance, even though they cannot use the new civilizations. This means that the Kumans do get their... Uh, discount on archer range and stable so that helps quite a bit for them in empire wars as the spec countdown winds down we'll be able to jump into the first game over here fire versus slam one of these players will have a shot at qualifying to the main event of red bull low five the other one is going to be out slam on the right side is franks in red and to the north of him is going to be mayans for uh, fire in yellow the good old-fashioned aoc civ matchup we are going to have an eagle opening here for fire he already made a uh, spearman to start with and there is going to be archers we'll have some walls coming up slowly whereas for slam classic stable opening in this one starts walling himself he has been walling quite a bit when he played against sito and I would assume that he's going to do something very similar. He can actually make some very nice walls around his base. Would be nice if he could extend this wall to this wood line. So this one is going to be safe. As he's also able to access the huntables. Spearman and the Eagle are already chasing as he's got a couple of scouts out on the field. Archers now in queue for fire in this one. Let's see what Slam can do here damage-wise. Because he's going to have two Frankish scouts here. So he even has the extra HP available for them and it looks like he's able to isolate the villager with the spearman arriving the lady is going to survive for the time being another isolated villager is available to pick off here or potentially this one could be the target nice reaction so far from fire he's chasing with the spearman archer spear and eagle being sent forward though against the uh, slam's base and it looks like slam while he's planning to add skirmishers he could have some heated moments in this one because now it is his gold mine and potentially his wood line that's gonna get harassed and cleaning up those archers will be much harder than cleaning up those scouts slam still trying to run around here but fire might have the initial momentum fire also killed one of the hunter boys with the archer so that slam cannot take it and he should do it with the other one as well but looks like he's gonna retreat upon seeing the flags on the stable for now both players are safe neither of them had to go for a defensive tower either as uh, Fire actually is using just one villager here right now to take the Huntables. There is a couple more coming back soon. Fire just now coming in with Fletching. And this might be the moment where we'll have Slam jumping on this army. Fire killed the other Huntable as well, so Slam cannot take it. That's a nice little move over here. And uh, you are going to have a couple of Spearmen out here as well. For Fire, Slam actually decides to jump on them. And that's the good decision here. He did take some damage but now he can clean up the egos and those egos are really valuable they do cost gold they take a lot of time to train so picking off those egos is massive value there for slam and now he's gonna be able to force back the archers the skirmisher still will have to focus down the spearman because that's probably the priority when it comes to taking down because you have so many scouts that you want to keep alive Eagle now trying to dive in on the skirmisher and will be successful because the spearman scares away the scouts. Behind this one, neither of the players has uh, a huge amount of resources in the bank, so neither of them will progress to Castle Age anytime soon. Defense upgrade for the infantry coming in for fire, as both players are playing very 
open on one side and somewhat walled on the other. This actually helps Fire just go for the long walls over here over time. And that's good for him because his map is actually a lot more spread out or a lot more open than Slam's one. So he needs this wall over here. But considering he's the one that initiates the fight, he will have the shot to just wall it off slow and steady. Scale barring on the way for Slam. So he's waiting for one big fight over here as uh, he's trying to pick off the Spearman from a distance. He's already adding villagers to gold. So he wants to go into Castle Age in the next couple of moments. Same thing for Fire, and Fire might have the advantage over here. So far, the start for a yellow player seems to be slightly stronger. You could say that he's on fire. So, for now the skirmishers will hold as uh, even forging is coming in for Fire. So this is the moment where you are gonna have uh, a potential eagle switch here indeed. Fire is gonna add the second barracks. This is a bit of a risky move because the thing is that Slam could just go for knights. So I'm not sure if the eagle switch, especially with Mayans, is the right thing to do here. Because Mayans don't get the training speed of eagles like Aztecs do. So they will struggle much more when it comes to spamming eagles in Castle Age, and they could easily get overrun by Frankish knights. So... For now, the skirmishers holding against the archers in uh, this one. The scouts trying to prevent the eagles from eating those skirmishers alive. Look at those resources, though. Still, both of them staying in feudal for the time being. Poking and probing. You got the spearmen also affected by the plus one, plus one. So, those are pretty sturdy guys over there. There is also plus one, plus one on the skirmishers of Slam. And he's the one that's cornered within his own base. So... Not looking great so far for him. This is why you always mix in Eagles when you play Archers with Mezzo in Empire Wars. But now that the Spearmen are gone, the time may have come for Slam to take this fight. And now this is a great fight for him. He's got plus one defense and the Skirmishers finishing off the Archers. That is a beautiful fight for Slam. A pure cleanup. Slam could actually buy himself up to Cancel Age over here. Whereas for Fire, he is about to click up. Fire going for barracks number three, so it's gonna be full eagles. If Slam actually gets up to Castle Age at the same time, or at least a comparable time, which is gonna happen, in fact, he's faster than Fire, then Slam just needs to go for uh, double stable or maybe even triple stable knights, and he should have no trouble dealing with uh, those eagles. I kind of feel like even Aztecs would struggle against Franks when it comes to such an eagle play, because Remember that uh, you don't have any advantage going into Castle Age. In fact, you are behind. But Mayans will struggle even more so over here. Slam trying to isolate the villager. This will be the first villager kill of the game. And indeed it is. Let's see if the scouts can get another one over here. Fire should be able to run back to the TC. And Slam indeed disengages. Slam is going to lose the two scouts there. But I mean the value is still there. Not ideal to lose two scouts. But he actually picked off a villager. So there is value. By the way, there is a hole here for fire. Is there? No, there is no hole there. So, fire is all good with these walls, although range units could deny this one very, very easily. Luckily for him, Franks aren't really playing range units in Castle Age. So, now it's pure skirms from Slam, and that's going to be quite a lot of skirms getting wasted by those uh, eagles. So that's far from ideal. For now, it looks like Slam just wants to run into the base of fire and check out what he's doing. Fire believes in eagle numbers that is four barracks now can you actually afford a quadruple barracks eagle production eh, probably not or at least not in early castle age on the other hand if uh fire gets a monastery in then he could actually try to overpower slam before slam gets to good uh knight numbers so dealing with the first couple of knights may be possible through a monastery he does have the wood for that, as uh, Eagle Warrior should be queued up immediately, so should Chainmail be a thing. It looks like he's going for Pikemen. So it's gonna be a mixture of Eagles and Pikemen, most likely. Something that's pretty hard to counter for Franks, unless they go for Throwing Axemen. Throwing Axemen could be the play here for Slam, but I don't think Fire's gonna let that happen. Fire's gonna play with the Eagles and the Pikemen, add a couple of Monks, and then probably forward Siege Workshop into Battering Rams is the name of the game. 
Because, indeed, the ego is killed Siege, that's why this is such a good composition. It's not like Scorpions or Manganos will work here, because the egos will just eat them alive. Now, these guys don't have Squires, I believe, because they're suspiciously slow, as uh, the Skirmisher's Heal will be just used as a decoy slash unit that sees what's happening on the field, and you can just throw them away in case they get into a bad combat. Slime is trying to go for Scorpions here, but as I said, Against those Eagle Warriors, that's gonna be rough, and the Infant Yosef have pretty good upgrades here. So, this is a tough fight here for Slam, not even something that he should take. 8 Knights, only 4 Pikemen, but there is 16 Eagles, that's the bigger thing here. The Eagles need to snipe the Scorpions and then disengage though, because this is not a good fight for Fire. Here comes the Eagle, sniping the Monk. Not a good fight here for Fire by any means. The Pikemen just disappeared and Fire took an absolutely horrendous fight. It looked bad at the beginning, but I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. Slam is still at 8 knights, but Fire is down to 8 eagles. That was a massive blunder there for Fire. Now, that's an insta-convert, so that helps a little bit. But it looks like Fire is gonna need a little bit more uh, pikemen. And uh, probably also just use the eagles to snipe siege other than fighting the knights head-on. Like, you don't want to fight knights head-on here, especially because those are plus 2, plus 2 knights. Not sure if uh, Fire has noticed that, but those knights are very tanky. Second TC coming in here for uh, Fire. And this is what I was referencing to when I said that uh, Slam is on fire. I mean, not literally. Slam is having really good games in this tournament. He's already mining stone. I am fairly certain that's for a defensive castle and throwing X-Men. He's also taking long swordsman, which is... Uh, a bit more unorthodox. Frankish Longswordsman, not something that you often see. Interesting. Anyways, you got uh, Slam healing up all the knights in uh, this one. And those are fully upgraded knights. The Eagles are still missing the plus two attacks, so are the Pikemen, but that's the only thing they are missing. Mayans, the only American civilization that does not have redemption, so they won't be able to convert the scorpions in this one. It's gonna be all about converting the knights. There is not even sanctity on these monks. The longswords, or the problem with longswords is that they are just like knights when it comes to dealing with the eagles. They just get converted much easier because they don't have mobility. Third barracks coming in here for slam, so monks could be an important piece here for fire if he gets a couple of conversions on those long swords. Behind this one, keep in mind that there is two TCs for fire, although he's idling both, so that's why he's actually behind in villager count compared to Slam. So, here come the Eagles, Slam Scorpions are heavily mispositioned here, and that is two Scorpions going down. Here come the monks now, and the monks are actually getting the conversions on the knights. That's quite a lot of conversions that could be had there, as uh, I see currently just one, two converted knights, but Slam now forced to run for his life over here, losing quite a lot of villagers, and he just doesn't have the numbers right now. He's forced to retreat, but this just opens up the wall for fire. You gotta wonder if this was the right decision to make. Looks like fire is hesitant to commit to this one, as... Uh, the quick wars are happening and he's just afraid that he's gonna have his army trapped. But he has definitely managed to make a good push here and Slam's food eco is disturbingly low right now. Another conversion comes in on a knight and there is two more monks here that could get some more conversions. And it looks like now fire is gonna commit. He sees that the knight's left so he's gonna send his force back over here. As uh, now Slam could afford defensive castle if he wanted to. Quick wars are happening over here. This army is trapped in here and I think the long swords will clean it up. But that it might be part of the plan here for fire. Because fire might just be planning to go for a forward siege workshop and just start steamrolling this part of Slam's base. Still, this is gonna be a lot of army lost here for fire. All Slam needs to do is just send in long swords, man. Long swords, by the way, have pretty decent upgrades, just missing the defense upgrade over here. Pikemen need to focus down the knights so that they can actually get some value for themselves. As expected, this is a cleanup over here, pretty decisive in fact, but Slam is going to lose his Siege Workshop in exchange. And behind this one, keep in mind that Fire is going to be on 3 TCs, Slam is only on 1. So, the problem for Slam right now is that he doesn't have space. There is quite a few Longswords out here and I wonder if we are going to see some Archers coming from Fire. 
he's making that TC on the stone, so Plume Darcher should be a possibility as well. But I'm not gonna lie, currently Fire doesn't seem to have answers to that many long swordsmen. And it looks like he's once again taking a very, very bad fight here. This victory might just be handed into the hands of uh, Slam here, because Fire is throwing away all his army. W what is he doing? What is he doing? He just lost all the Eagles. Look at the KD, 99 to 68. I mean, this is not Slam winning this game. This is Fire losing it the second consecutive time where he took so horrendous engagements that it's just awful to watch. There was the fight where he sent in all the Eagles against the Knights and those all died. But now this one and guess what? Slam has enough stone for a castle. Slam cannot actually sustain this for long because his economy is not really great, but Slam doesn't even have to. He just needs to use the timings right, and now he's got the timing because Fire is still making egos. That that's not that's not gonna work, and it shouldn't even work. So here is the deal. You are not supposed to just win the game against long swordsmen that are supposed to counter egos by spamming egos. That's six barracks for fire, but I kind of feel like his strategy is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna spam eagles. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I just feel like this strategy is just lacking creativity as it is. As now that castle's gonna go up, monasteries will be history now, so no more conversions for uh, fire over there. Slam is still missing the plus two defense on those long swords, but that's the only thing that is missing and that would be pretty valuable so that he can dive in and take that TC down. I think he might have Arsenal already. And now it is Pikeman. Pikeman Eagle, Pikeman Eagle. Nope. No, no, no. That should have been... Like, in the moment he sees even just men at arms, let alone long swords, he should have had the second range and switch back to crossbows and go Pikeman crossbow. We have seen this matchup before, and now he's going for a crossbowman, but as I said, the timing is there for uh, Slam. The good news for Fire here is that he's not getting actively killed, so he might have a window here, because Slam got the castle up over here, but that's it. He isn't really pushing into the base of Fire. Fire looks like he's doing a mass migration here on the right side, because I think he's running out of gold. This is a gold mine he can take, this is the other secondary gold, and the, he's probably prospecting for gold with these villagers. This one is the closest gold mine for him, which actually belongs to Slam. Another castle being dropped in the face here. This is the only gold mine that Fire has right now. He's going for the stone mine, so he wants his own castle. But Fire will be without gold here. And I don't think uh, that he's gonna be able to find this gold, or at least keep control of it for long. Longsword still pushing in here, and there's nothing that protects these uh, stone miners over here, by the way. A couple of crossbows are out, but I mean, there is knights here to deal with those crossbows. So, look at this slaughter. I think the KD tells the whole story. So, yeah, crossbows are out, very nice, but villagers are going down left and right, and Fire's economy is like half idle. Eagle's coming in here to raid, this was what he was working on. Sending in Egos to raid, but nice quick pause from Slam. As I said, Slam is playing a surgical precision game in uh, many, many ways. In this one, there is the Egos coming in to raid, but, well, Slam with a quick pause, and you see now villagers are dying left and right. Fire gives up, and Slam takes the W. Not gonna lie, the strategy choice here for Fire was very underwhelming, so... He just sort of wanted to spam Eagles with Mayans. If it was Aztecs, maybe. But with Mayans, you don't have enough production to do that. And Slam just reacted very nicely. He realized that, okay, it's Pikemen and Eagles, so Longswords is the way to go. He didn't wait until he had enough stone for a castle and throwing axe, he just went Longswords and Longswords, Frankish Longswords, to be precise are winning the game here for Slam. Really, the main stat to look at is this one. 152 kills to 87 deaths. Just look at these. You can clearly tell the fights versus Fire lost the game. This one, that was the Eagle Warriors Kamikaze into Knights. And this one, that was the Eagle Warriors Kamikaze into Longswords. Those two fights. 
And this smaller one was when he actually committed against the base of Slam at the end, but got cleaned up by Longsword. So, Slam also lost quite a lot of units over here, but obviously um, the inefficiency was much greater for Fire in this one. Economy-wise, they were all pretty close at the end, but keep in mind that Fire was actually 3 TCs and Slam was 1, so that's probably uh, just telling a lot about how good Slam was with his macro in that one. And with that, that is a 1-0 for Slam over here, keeping the dream alive of getting into his second Red Bull Vololo main event. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Fire never played a Red Bull Vololo, right? I mean, main event. So, that is... That, that this would be his first Red Bull. All right, so setting up the next game over here, we are going to have uh, the first whole map of Fire coming in here. He's got a pretty diverse list of maps. So Khmer, Incas, well, that, that's the civilizations, but first maps. Acclivity, Atacama, Kawasan. So... Very, very diverse maps. Acclivity is like a medium-paced map. It's volleyball, but it takes quite a lot of effort to wall. Atacama is very open, aggressive. Kawasan is a slower-paced hybrid map. So, I would say that he probably needs to calm down a little bit. And uh, going for a super cutthroat map like Atacama, for example, might not be a good idea. So, I would say, if I was Fire, I would probably go for Kawasan. Because... You need to settle things down after this game because it might have been tilting that you got... Like, there were moments where it seemed like Fire is just going to stomp Slab. So he probably needs uh, a little bit of a slower-paced game right now to calm things down and think about how to proceed. We got Sargon99 with the new sub. I appreciate that a lot. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, the players are in the lobby. And uh, they should be good to go in a matter of moments. Unfortunately, since the lobbies are not really visible in-game, it's not possible for us to check the map before they would actually start. Um, right now it's set on Coastal, actually. So, they haven't chosen a map just yet. But as I said, I would vouch for Kawasan for fire. If it's Kawasan, then what's the Civ, though? Maybe Berbers? He's got Vietnamese, which is sort of a counterpick to Britons or Ethiopians. Let's talk about other Civs. Khmer will go for Atacama. Acclivity might be Incas. I think that um, Vikings may have been the choice for Arabia. Or runestones if it was available. And then maybe Mayans for Kawasan could have been an interesting one. I think Slam may have wanted to play Aztecs on Kawasan. Slam might play Huns here. Because for Slam, he would have Britons or Ethiopians were enclosed. Haboob could be a decent Cummins map. Atacama would be reasonable with Magyars. Tutans is also reasonable open map civilization, something that you could use on Meadow, for example. And then you have Chinese as well. So there is some diversity in the civilizations available to Jordan. Let's see if the game has launched. There is some AoE server issues, so it's hard to spot lobbies. That's why I'm uh, sometimes silent. 
when it comes to um, discussing these because I need to sort of uh, find the lobby myself or at least uh, look for it. Why Project Belgium disqualified? Um, we discussed this before, but probably the best is to check Hera's Twitter because Hera posted about that one and he explains it. I don't know the details as well, so um, Hera apparently has more details on it. So Hera's Twitter is probably the best place to look for information about that. I really don't know much about the situation. It's unfortunate that I know. All right, we're going to Atacama. So Fire looks like he wants to play an aggressive set over here. Interesting decision, because the thing is that you're one game behind, and the Atacama is a very cutthroat map, one bad move, and you are gone. Um, Tempo, or, well, Hera's Twitter is uh, Hera underscore AOE. So... I think he explains it pretty detailed over there. So, once we have the spec delay gone, we can talk about this game. Magyars for Slam as expected, and Bulgarians for Fire. So you could ask why Bulgarians here, because you are unlikely to go men at arms on uh, Atacama. And the reason why is Blacksmith. That's the short answer. So, the Blacksmith bonus of uh, Bulgarians is something that helps immensely, especially matching up against Magyars. Because Magyars will start with free forging, so you probably want to get forging for yourself as fast as possible. And the fact that blacksmith technologies cost 50% food less is something that helps immensely with that. So the main reason why we're seeing Bulgarians here is because you want to grab fast uh, forging just to make sure that your scouts are even compared to the Magyars one. We're going to have Slam Boy on the left side as... Uh, Red Magyars, right side is going to be Bulgarians for Fire in yellow. You see stable opening here, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Fire clicking that uh, forging button in a matter of moments. As I said, it would cost him 75 food, which is something that he could easily squeeze in, and he wants to squeeze that in because otherwise his scouts are inferior to the Magyar ones, and you see, here it is. That's why Bulgarians is not a counter pick to Magyars, it's sort of a pick that evens things out in early feudal age, something that's much, much needed. Looks like both players are scouting each other, and since both of them pretty much sent all their villagers off from gold, we are gonna have uh, full scouts war over here, as Atacama is meant to be played. Now, here's the deal. Slam, however, moves out with a villager, carefully walls it in. I like the cautiousness. It's unlikely you're going to encounter a scout here, but you never know. And Slam, just like the GL players before in previous tournaments, he is going to play this map to the dock. This map was, uh, I think, Doubt's go-to map, or at least one of um, Doubt's maps when he actually won Red Bull Volo. So, yeah, the fact that he's actually able to add a dock is pretty nice. Obviously, he won't be able to afford a lot of fishing ships at the beginning. But that's still going to get him a little bit of an eco boost over here. Fire looks like he's not really bothering adding any fishing eco. He just wants to go full farming. No eco upgrades for fire whatsoever. Whereas for uh, Slam, he actually has gotten double bit axe at least. Two scouts come in, but these guys do have the extra attack. So they could easily pick off a villager here on the wood line if they can isolate one. Slam with the quick wall, but that's going to fail. And I think the villager will make it back to the TC alive. Or the scouts commit, and it looks like we are going to have one villager traded to one scout. On the other hand, here comes the scout push by Slam. Fire tried to trap those scouts there. That was his only shot. Fire couldn't have run back to the TC against that many scouts. What he wanted to do is just trap those scouts in there and just let the spearman finish. Nice move from him in this one. Fire so far is the only player that has killed a villager from the opponent, as he's about to lose another scout. But considering that Slam has fishing eco, that is just resulting in a completely even economy between the two players. We have uh, Slam coming in with bloodlines, and that's where things are getting rough. It's one thing that you can get the forging fast for the Bulgarian player. That's alright. But Myers also have cheaper scouts, which helps immensely, and it looks like this mass migration for Slam is aimed at taking a wood line. Now with bloodline scouts, the timing will be perfect for Slam. 
he might even be able to jump these spearmen. It's going to be a close call, but he might think about fighting this one and then trying to take the fight against the villagers. Uh, he's probably busy not losing villagers over here, though, as a fire wants to focus down a villager. Another villager goes down here from uh, Slam here. Behind this one, Slam has added two fishing ships, so economies are still dead even, and the scout numbers are rapidly increasing for Slam here. He's at seven, and he's got bloodlines. Fire's got five scouts, but he doesn't have bloodlines. He does have plus one defense, though. First villager from Fire goes down, as the scouts find the gold mine. You can tell that Slam is very cautious with his scouts. He doesn't want to throw them away, and uh, that is something that we kind of need to appreciate here. Scouts coming in, though, as well from Fire. There is, as I said, quite a few of them, and the micro is nice as well from Fire, so he's able to pick off the spearmen. Now the villagers will join the party as well. Slam just wants to take down those scouts, and honestly, he actually did a pretty decent job with that. I don't think that those scouts will be able to do much before the next spearman arrives. Still, we're gonna have Slam falling back over here for uh, defense. He knows that he doesn't need to actively kill. Did you see that? That's what we call a wrong hotkey. He almost made a transport ship. That's a bad fight there for Slam. That's a very, very bad fight. He just ran into a bunch of spearmen and scouts. Fire still doesn't have bloodlines, but he has both blacksmith upgrades. Whereas for Slam, he's missing the defense upgrade. I like this wall for Slam here. This will prevent the scouts from hitting the wood line immediately. And it looks like he's gonna do a big wall around in this one. This allows him to send the scouts forward. So he's confident that these walls will go up, and they will. And... Fire also tries to wall his villagers in, but that will be less successful than the efforts of uh, Slam. And it looks like these villagers, now that they are done with this wood line, they will just go to the next one. That means that they are so far away that there is no chance for you to save them. We are gonna have uh, some more raids attempted here by Fire. So far it's two villagers killed on both sides. And now it looks like Fire also gets his dock up. There is two exposed villagers here that... Uh, will be walled in most likely fire can't really afford or just doesn't have the time to add fishing ships here and talk about adding stuff the scouts now finally have a chance to strike at slam's eco and actually be meaningful that is quite a few villagers died over here from slam looks like the spearman support from fire was very useful because it swinged the battle in the favor of uh, fire so now you have five kills for fire only two for slam and as i said now that fire has a dock he could also add some fishing eco and uh, take over Slam. He needs to because otherwise Slam is just going to outboom him. Slam already making a second dock on the north and you are gonna have uh, five fishing ships already here for Slam. That's why he still has the eco lead. So Fire coming in here with uh, some more spearmen. He's super duper heavy on the spearmen front but that only works if you're actually the one initiating the fight at the base of Slam. If Slam is allowed to run away, he he's just gonna hit your wood lines. So far though, Slam is not allowed to escape, and that means that whoever gets to Castle Age first might actually take over, and that is by far Slam. This is where those five fishing ships that were there the whole time actually start paying for their price. Fire is getting his fishing ships out, but he hasn't been gathering food uh, from water for quite a while, so that's where... Slam's fishing eco advantage comes in. That's going to be a much, much faster castle age. It looks like there is towers coming in, though, from fire. So now that Slam is leaving with his scouts, taking this fight over here. It's now plus one, plus one on those uh, scouts for both sides. So it's an even fight. But with Spearman joining, Slam could lose his scouts. The bigger deal is that the tower goes up. Fire is still very, very far away from uh, castle age. But he is able to deny the wood line of his opponent for a moment. Which means that Slam... Okay, Slam is able to afford triple stables. There is an overchop. There is an overchop and now that's disaster. You are the most vulnerable when you have just clicked up to the next stage. And that's exactly what we are seeing. Far going full feudal. And that tower might not even go up for Slam. But even if it does, so many villagers will bite the dust here. And the scouts will just finish it off. To be honest, that's a disaster for Slam over there. Because he's going towards Castle Age, but boy oh boy, I feel like he's not gonna have any gold to work with. 
for uh, night production and he just lost so many wheels he doesn't have wood income so reseeding these farms will be the problem because he went without horse color normally in an rm game if you start making farms in early feudal and you don't have horse color and you click up at basically the same time as you would as a standard knights build let's say 14 ish farmers or so then you run out of uh food on your farms just when you reach castle age so the fact that slams wood income is denied slash delayed like this matters quite a bit because there is going to be no chance to reseed the farms as uh, slam is going to have to quick wall here it's even hard to quick wall because you have to buy some wood to do that slam still has pretty decent fishing economy but now fire has taken over pretty considerably in eco numbers and slam has his eco stretched out really badly knights are coming in to chase those uh, scouts and fire finds a way to castle age as well same thing here you just focus the wheels at this point it doesn't matter that the spearman is poking down your uh, scouts what matters is that slam is just gonna have a harder and harder time gathering resources a few more wheels go down 16 will kills to free this tower and more importantly over chop was massive here that over chop might cost slam the game because otherwise he was in a commanding position still he's sending knights forward so the response here for fire has to be spearmen and you see this army of spearmen marching around here just like in campaigns quick walls from fire will fail so the knights can run past he just needs to bridge through about uh a minute of time i like these walls over here he should make some walls around here as well so that his uh, lumberjacks are all safe here come the houses very nicely done that's some nice quick walls over there from fire so so far slam wasn't able to capitalize on his better castle -ish timing and look at that many of those scouts are weak but they still come back and yes they are low hp but they will still be able to force some engagements, pick off a couple of wheels here. The value here is enormous for uh, fire. As that is now 20 villagers killed compared to 4. We are going to have uh, fire. Now getting some losses on his farming eco. And fire is going to attack him to pikemen. Fire only has uh, two stables worth of production, but it's a consistent production, not something that should be overlooked. And Fire could soon solidify his position in the middle with a crepost. Quick was from Fire, is he gonna do it? Oh, it was so close. He was just a little too slow with the final quick wall to trap those knights in there. That would have been a masterful move. So now... You see Slam, he's got 18 on food, but most of that is fishing ships and they will soon run out of uh, fish here, or at least on the left side pond. Fire does have some fishing eco as well. 57 to 50 is the eco count right now. So, knights looping all the way around in this one to get some villager kills. Uh, probably on the gold mine, that's the best spot they can hit. For that very reason, I think Fire now should invest into a town center here on the gold because the wood line is relatively safe would make sense to tc the gold knights coming in looks like they're hitting the farming eco that is one two villagers killed it looks like slam is taking the initiative now three villagers going down in this one and that pretty much evens out the villager numbers the good news for fire is that there's a lot of weak villagers here on this wood line that can easily get intercepted by a couple of leftover scouts or knights. So he's able to retaliate immediately for all the villager casualties. Knight numbers much better for uh, Slam right now. Hey Project Belgium, I heard what happened. People were asking me, but I was only informed from chat slash uh, Hera's Twitter. So, quite a lot of knights in here. The knights do have plus two, plus two. The spearmen only plus two, plus one. So, we are gonna have some more knights coming in. And there is a handful of knights defending here for Slam. He's got slightly better upgrades than Fire. Fire is missing the defense upgrades on both his pikemen and his knights. Looks like Slam turns back to fight, but I'm not sure if this is a good enough fight for Slam here. A lot of these knights were weak. Looks like it is good enough for him in the end, though. Many knights survive for Slam here. Most of these are weak. 
but still they could be healed up with a monk in the future <laughs> look at this forward lumberjacking operation by fire next to that tower second tc is up for fire it looks like he prioritizes taking the stone but with that much wood in the bank you could drop a tc here and i think that's the priority knights once again coming in and those villagers are so isolated again for slam looks like the knights don't really care until now so some villagers will eventually survive a random wolf is chasing the knights but at this point slam has lost two reveals his opponent only lost nine and uh, now that number is gonna increase and there is a hole here as much as there was an over chop for slam there is now an opening here for uh, slam to do damage so hold on for a brief moment because if fire is not paying attention he could easily get his entire wood income smashed just like he did to slam so at this point villager counts are getting closer and closer and fire has a ton of idols because he doesn't have army he doesn't have army and i am struggling to see why we're not seeing a town center here on the gold I think it would have been better to go for the gold in the first place and just wall off the lumberjacks because it was only knights. And I feel like this might be the moment where control is starting to slip out of the grasp of uh, fire over here. And since Slam has a bunch of knights and his opponent is very heavy on pikemen, I think this might be the time for a cavalry switch for Slam. Looks like is Slam going to send a monk here to heal the knight or heal the villagers? That's so cute. So, now it is 17 army versus 9, and remember, there is no plus 2 defense for the knights or the pikemen of fire here. Fire now, unable to access gold. So, suddenly, the battle swings in the favor of Slam. He took some good engagements, but more importantly, it was about the fact that he had better upgrades on his knights. Right now, no gold income for fire, or at least not from this gold mine, and he's gonna have to go for this one. He could TC this, and I think he should TC this. He needs a TC on a gold mine. So that at least he can jump into the TC when the raids come, so he doesn't have to walk all the way back. Slam now just absolutely slamming the door shut over here for Fire. Fire unable to train knights over here because he's without gold. And he wants to train pikemen, but he doesn't have the production for it. And even if he has the pikemen, he doesn't have the mobility. From this point on, despite the fact that Fire is on free TC, Slam is slowly taking over economically because the worker efficiency is very underwhelming here for... Uh, fire it is underwhelming as well for slam probably because he had a lot of idle time on fishing ships this one also doesn't look very very nice but at least he has a functional economy whereas for fire he's just running for his life right now although although there is a hole here there is a hole in between that tree and the house okay slam finds it is it gonna be in time the knights are coming the knights are coming the knights are coming! Fire doesn't realize this is huge. I think Fire would have had a split second to run in there. But now this is massive. If those knights get in here, that's game over for Slam. Now it looks like Slam is going to take a somewhat uncomfortable fight with this many pikemen around, Monk getting a conversion in. Not necessarily a great fight for uh, Slam over there. Now it's even armies, and when it's even armies, it's actually good for Fire because he still has the eco lead. So, wasn't... I'm not really sure if this was worth it for Slam, and now he's mass migrating to the right side. Those knights aren't really getting a lot of value, and that's so unlucky for Fire. He sent in one knight to try and snipe the monk, and that knight got converted really fast. Knights trying to dive in now, another conversion happened. Two conversions for Slam here, extremely important. He was pretty lucky with the conversion RNG, as uh, once again, a small fight goes in his favor... He gets uh, no uh, conversion over here, which means that uh, these knights, by the way, these are on stand ground. They are chilling here. They could have killed three villagers by now, but they don't really bother with that. So, now it's even army, but indeed, 
this just means that fire can finally start booming. I think Slam has overcommitted his army over there. Because now his economy is much weaker. He's still 1 TC and the knights get into the gold mine. The knights get into the gold mine. It looked very, very dicey for fire for a long time. So there were moments where it seemed obvious that fire is just going to get slammed. Get it? Slammed here. But now I feel like Slam's chances might be fading away. Slam has 8 on food, so he can produce more knights. Gary with the Prime sub. Thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. Welcome. Hello, hello. So now it's just a matter of being able to afford uh, the knights that you're producing. Because Slam can't really do that. He has 13 on food. That's not enough for triple stable knights here. And... Also to expand your economy, whereas for fire he is definitely expanding his economy now. This is the final wave of soldiers coming from Slam, and this is not a good enough fight for uh, our red player in order to be able to win the game. It's gonna be the armies cancelling each other pretty much, but that just means that Slam will have no tools to cut down that eco deficit. That's the thing. So this many villagers advantage in an even army situation is just going to favor fire over here the next wave of pikemen already here to defend by the way slam has never actually recovered his uh lumberjacking operation in the middle so that means that slam is just basically eating these small tra straggler trees which also makes life much harder he finally moves to the middle only to be potentially punished by fire immediately fire another tc on the wood line to solidify this side so at this point, I think Fire just needs to sit on his economical lead and uh, just keep raiding. I would say that he could even switch into Cav Archers if he wanted to with Bulgarians. Bulgarian Cav Archers are nothing to be ashamed of. And sure, Magyars would have better Cav Archers in the long run, but at this point, that might not even be a thing. Looks like Slam knows that he is in trouble. He was gonna try a Siege Workshop on the front here, but I mean, this is the problem for Slam. He just keeps losing eco. Because he has limited amount of knights available. A couple of conversions occurred over here, but Fire wasn't particularly successful with the conversion RNG, if I have seen it right. Still, double Town Center Fire plus Pikeman plus Knights. That's the end there for Slam. And Fire evens things out. It wasn't nice in every moment, but in the end, the thing that usually wins or loses Atacama games. The villager KD is what does the story. Fire killed more villagers from uh, Slam. And really, when the scouts got into this gold mine at the beginning, that's where things started to go wrong for Slam. Until then, he was in a commanding lead and he was about to get up to Castle Age. But that just set him back so, so much. All right. Yeah, absolutely. That tower was very good and also the overchop because the tower just denied the wood and Slam was about to make another tower. What made it really good for Fire is that he was able to get in with the scouts and kill the tower building villagers and just idle the gold miners. And Slam got up to Castledge much faster, but he didn't have the gold to make knights because, uh, well, his gold mine was idle for a long time. So, yeah, it wasn't always very nice for uh, Fire. Especially this mid-castle age was uh, wacky, but he was able to kill more eco from his opponent and just build up his economical lead over time and then finally finish off the game with superior numbers, basically. Alright, let's edit the score over here. So... We are gonna have uh, Magyars as a win. No, Magyars is a loss. And we also have uh, a Bulgarian win over here for Fire. He actually did what he had to win his own home map. That's the most important thing. I think, especially after losing the um, Runestones game, the most important thing for any player is to just try to win your own home maps. And then try to take away a home map from the opponent. So you can't afford to lose uh, runestones and lose your home maps at the same time. So 
we let's see what the next game is going to be we're going to one of the home maps of slam over here enclosed haboob meadow are the options right now so uh, let's see what we have we don't have the game up just yet i believe which means Oh yeah, Krasini has just posted this. Well, it was 20 minutes ago, but still. Um, he said, players having major issues joining lobbies. So, it may cause some delays that the players are unable to join lobbies. Hopefully, that won't be a thing, though. Alright. So, let's talk about Sifs here. A boob is an interesting thing. Because usually it's a scout's map. Back in the days, the meta was uh, simply scouts, with uh, mostly Magyars or Franks. But it was Gamer Legion that pioneered the Britons archer build there, so it's very possible we're seeing uh, Britons on Haboob. It's 1-1, one, one. yeah, yeah, that's right, um, I forgot to change the score. Sorry, but yeah, it's 1-1. One, one. So, Haboob could very well be Britons. Although Enclosed could also be an interesting uh, map for Britons. I assume that Saracens for Fire is planned for Enclosed, which means that you want to have an Archer Sieve there for Slam, either Britons that train the Archers faster or Ethiopians. So I think Enclosed and Haboob will be Britons Ethiopians. Meadow needs a Scout Civilization, probably Huns because you could go Cav Archers in that case as well. Acclivity and Kawasan would be left with Kumans, Chinese, Teutons. Uh, Meadow could be Kumans for multiple reasons. For example, being able to you know, go for multiple production buildings at the beginning because it's cheaper. Then potentially add the second town center on the wood line earlier. That could be an interesting idea here for Slam. And then Kawasan would be something like Chinese maybe. You don't particularly have an amazing Kawasan civilization here. No Aztecs. Huns could be reasonable there, but I just feel like there is way better use for uh, Huns on Meadow, for example. Or... Yeah, honestly, now that I think about that, Huns for Meadow or Kumans. If you use Kumans on Meadow, then Huns will be for Kawasan. And then you are left with Chinese or Teutons for Acclivity, which is probably Chinese. Whereas on the other side... Khmer is still available, surprising that we have not seen it on Atacama. So... Tatars will go for Acclivity. Saracens probably for Enclosed. I think Vietnamese is planned for Haboob to counterpick a potential Britain's pick there. Berbers is a meadow civilization to me. That would be a hard counter to Huns. And Incas might be the Acclivity Civ. Wait, no. Uh, Tatars are Acclivity, so Incas Khmer would be left for Kawasan, and either of those could work there. Probably Khmer is more likely there. So, we don't have a game up just yet. They are setting up the next game. Slam is in the lobby, Fire is not. Let's hope that we are not going to have any enormous issues jumping into lobbies for the players so Uh, let's see if we have game now. Nope. It looks like we're actually having uh, the players having issues with uh, joining lobbies. It has been a thing for a while, so we are almost getting used to that. Now, the good news is that Haboob is still censored in the game. So the na name of the map is still something that uh, will not be displayed in game. Luckily, we're using Capture Age, but still, that's... Uh, Interesting slash fun fact 
to consider. So let's talk about Fire's journeys in uh, Red Bull Wolves before, because we talked about Slam, he played in the first one and then failed to qualify for the rest of them. Now, what is up with uh, Fire? I don't think Fire has played in any Red Bull Volo main events so far. So, Red Bull Volo 1, he actually lost to Nikov in the qualifiers. Oh, he was so close. Red Bull Volo 1, in the final round of the qualifiers, he lost to Nikov 4 3. So, it was a very close set. Then, the second qualifiers, he actually. Wait a second, he played the first one. I was misled. Someone said he didn't play a main event. He actually got into the main event of the first Red Bull Vololo. Um, he beat Lix in uh, the qualifiers final round. This is a, going to be a fun trivia though. I did mention that uh, Slam, the only Red Bull Vololo he played was Red Bull Vololo 1. He qualified. And uh, at that time, Red Bull Vololo main event was single elimination, not group stage. Slam was up against Mr. Yo, and in the first round, Slam lost 3-0. Mr. Yo went on to win the grand finals, defeating Viper 4-0. Fire was up against Viper in the first round, and uh, Viper won 3-1. So, the two players that are matching up in today's matchup right now have both been in the main event of Red Bull Wololo 1, and have actually both lost to the finalists of Red Bull Volo 1. That's just a fun trivia style thing for us over here. Alright, the both players are in the lobby. So... They were successful joining. That is definitely a delightful thing to see. Because uh, that allows us to... get the game going. So, by the way, as a sort of a shout-out slash sell-out to myself, it is Red Bull Volo qualifiers this weekend, but before Red Bull Volo 5 in September, um, we are gonna have another Empire Wars tournament hosted by none other than myself, Empire Wars Duo 2, 2v2 Empire Wars, sponsored by Microsoft, and uh, that is going to start with the qualifiers on the 19th of... Uh, August. So coming up this Thursday, qualifiers and Friday as well. Main event starts next weekend. We'll have all the big teams. So Tempo, um, two teams from GL. We have AM, WWP, Brazilian teams, Salt, and so much more. So make sure that you tune in for that because it's going to be really fun. Arch for thank you so much for the Prime sub. Appreciate it a lot. Welcome back for the fourth month. So, yeah, make sure that you tune in for that, or just check out the VODs on YouTube in case you catch, can't catch them live, because all of those will go on YouTube as well. So, the players are technically in the lobby, it's just a matter of uh, the game not starting yet. Let's hope that we don't have to wait forever for them. So yeah, Empire Wars 2, I'm really hyped about that because this is the first time we're going to see 2v2 Empire Wars being even a thing in a major tournament. We had a first edition last year, but it was a relatively small event. We had some pro teams playing that, but obviously the teams didn't spend that much time preparing than they do for this one. So I'm really curious how it's gonna go. I've seen Hera and Leary playing some 2v2 Empire Wars on the maps as a preparation, so I'm hyped. I'm really hyped for uh, Empire Wars Duo 2. And then, obviously, Red Bull Vololo in uh, September. So that's the next major thing. It's going to be a LAN event from uh, Heidelberg Castle, Germany. And it looks like Fire has left the lobby, so they might have some issues after all. So the Red Bull Vololo... Live main event is uh, a LAN at Heidelberg Castle, Germany, with a prize pool of 100,000 American dollars. Massive, massive prize pool for uh, the event. 
over there. Unfortunately, some players will be unable to attend. As far as I know, Dogao has said that he probably won't be able to attend. Mr. Yo, according to people that were on his stream, Mr. Yo also said that he cannot attend. So, unfortunate. Yeah, I, I partially agree, Nadia, as well, that it's so weird that, like, it's LAN, but it's LAN only in the way that the players are sitting in the same room and they don't have lag in between them. But yeah, it's more like an offline finals. And it's also offline finals with an asterisk. Because uh, keep in mind that, uh, you know, not even all players will be able to play there, which is just sad. Obviously, it's not their fault, so it is just the way that the word works right now. So, the thing is that, uh, indeed, it would have been nicer with viewers. I really miss the ECL LAN times. I think I mentioned that quite a bit before, that, uh, like, back when I started casting, ECL was the, the big tournament, the tournament of uh, the era. And I was there at the ECL, and I think I also met Nadia there. I definitely remember. I also remember that Nadia had some issues uh, entering the UK on the airport. I remember fun trivia like that. Um, so, yeah. But I obviously, I was a very, very small caster at that time, so I wasn't even remotely considered to cast the event, but it would be nice to cast at a LAN, like an actual LAN at some time. Yeah, I met with a lot of people. Um, so, I remember... Robo was there, obviously. Moonfaller, Eru, I remember as well. Um, Kamigawa, Nadia. Um, Warion was there from the community. So, a lot of people. Eddie was there, indeed. In case anyone hasn't seen, as we have the game launching up just now on Haboob. So, in case anybody hasn't seen, and if you're interested in, uh, you know, the legacy of many players in Competitive Age Vampires... Um, Eddie has posted an update on what's up with him. He got, he's about to get married and stuff like that. So, a lot of updates with Eddie. Unfortunately, it looks like he's not returning to AoE 2 anytime soon, which is sad. Eddie was, Eddie was the personality of AoE 2. He was one of the most interesting people in the AoE 2 community. Uh, eating vegetables. Well, it's, it's his decision. Anyone can eat vegetables exclusively if they want. I'm not that type of a person. So, um, we have a Spectator countdown coming in here. We are jumping in to Teutons versus Tatars on Haboob. This is interesting from multiple directions, because these are not civilizations that are often seen on uh, this map. In fact, Tatars... It was expected for acclivity. That would probably mean that the Incas might be considered for acclivity in the end. Alright, so the game is up. 15 seconds left from the countdown on Haboob. A map that got disimplemented for Red Bull Volo 4. I'm not sure if it was a thing for RBW 3. It was definitely an early Red Bull map, but then it got removed and it's getting added back because this tournament is also featuring a lot of maps from the previous Red Bulls that players or players and viewers liked, players and viewers voted for. So I think there was a post on AoE Zone that asked which were the favorite maps of the community from previous Red Bulls, and I assume that uh, the ratings for Haboob were pretty high, one of the reasons why this uh, is being used here. Acclivity was uh, in all. Uh, Acclivity was in all Red Bull starting two, I think, because we don't have any maps from Red Bull One now. Red Bull One maps are pretty much gone. Um, but I was talking about uh, this one, Haboob, which was not here in our RBW Four. That's that I remember. Anyways, we're gonna have Tatars for fire in uh, yellow on the left, and right side is Teutons for slam in red. Teutons really want to finish this game fast over here, because if Tatars can get to Cav Archers, Teutons will struggle insanely badly against that one. Even more so than, let's say, Franks would struggle against that. Teutons don't want to go for Skirmishers, 
and Teutons' definition of a slow cavalry civilization as we have a slam opening with a stable and an archer range also milling the deer over here. So here the range just serves the purpose of dealing with that spearman, whereas on the other side, fire is opening with archers, but reality is that he's gonna get steamrolled here at this pace because the mobility is on the side of uh, slam right now and there is already skirms coming out so i'm not sure how much those archers can do fire has actually walled off his entire wood line but he has to be careful because as those villagers are moving around chopping wood they might accidentally open the gate and that could cause uh, considerable issues when those scouts arrive for now the archers are looping around i think Fire might be heading all the way around here to hit the wood line. Something that Slam didn't really bother to wall. So, for now, I am actually favoring Slam's position here in Feudal as a stable comes in. But once Castle Age hits, I feel like it's Tatars all over the place. So, you would have camels to deal with knights. Although, obviously, the Teutons have monks to deal with that. But the real thing would be Cav Archers eventually for Fire. The key thing is getting those cav archer numbers up high. That's the hard part. As those archers are still sneaking around and... Looks like Slam is preparing for this. Slam knows that there is army missing from here. Which means that that army is probably heading towards his wood line. Which is by far the most vulnerable spot in his economy. But looks like Fire is gonna get away with a villager kill over here. Maybe even two before that army arrives over here. And the archers could focus down the archer and then use the spearman to fight this one. That is a pretty decent fight, I would say, for Fire over here. He could yoink the Archer, and now, as well, on the Scout. That's a very, very good fight for Fire over there. He has managed to kill two Villagers, also finished off uh, Archers, and will take down a couple of Scouts. That was massive value there. The good news for Slam is that he's actually able to retaliate here on the gold mine of Fire. Spearmen are lagging behind a little bit, so that's two Villagers down for Fire, and we're once again dead even in the villager department. Looking at resources, it very much seems like to me that Fire wants to get to Castle Age here, because he's banking quite a lot of resources, he isn't really going for a full unit flood, whereas for Slam, he's going for a much more aggressive approach. Previous game it was Slam who went for uh, the faster Castle Age and got punished for it, this time around it might be Fire who gets punished pretty severely, Archer is getting some nice shots on uh, the scouts in this one. More scouts are on the way, the scouts do possess plus one defense, but no bloodlines. Still, they are a considerable force over here, and with skirmisher support, the spearmen can be eliminated pretty easily. And now, you are seeing why scouts was usually the meta on this map. Scouts can be really powerful, especially if you grab bloodlines, and you will have the mobility to keep raiding in all directions. Second range coming in for fire. He is preparing a cavalry switch eventually, but for now that's going to be crossbowmen. Considering that Slam isn't really using his mobility right now with the scouts, this could help Fire, and it looks like Fire knows that trouble could be coming his way on the wood line, so he's gonna make a defensive tower. He knows exactly that. Oh boy, if Skirms or Archers ever get there, he's gonna be in trouble, because scouts and Archers or Skirms would actually annihilate that wood line. For now, looks like Fire is uh, playing a pretty defensive focused game over here. Bloodlines and plus one attack coming for Slam though. So, Slam is not sitting around, he's gonna go for the aggressive push, and as I said, if these scouts and the archers at the same time hit the wood line, then that's disaster for uh, Fire. Looks like Fire was able to isolate some of these skirms here, but this is not a good fight for Fire by any means. Bloodlines just finished for Slam, and I'm not even sure if uh, Fire knows that he's fighting against Bloodline scouts, but this might be game over here. This might be game over here, because the entire army of Fire is getting absolutely annihilated. And from this point on, nothing is stopping this army from heading to the wood line and hitting it from this side, or just running around and killing farmers, killing gold miners, and indeed, that's it. Slam takes it, full feudal it is, and with the power of bloodlines, he obviously was able to leverage his scout play. Worth pointing out that, um, obviously with two turns, he has a great farming eco as well. So quick strike back over here by Slam very convincingly winning his own home map kind of felt like the game plan was just better here for slam Tatars would have been a much better civilization in castle age but you have to get to castle first eight minutes game time we i think waited more for the game in the lobby than the actual game time but that's just empire wars things 
So, very quick strike over here fr from uh, Slam on Haboob to make it a 2-1 scoreline. Tatars will be a loss here, and the Teutons is a victory for the owners of these civilizations. So, now it's 2-1 in the favor of Slam, and as I said, for both players from this point on, it's all about winning the home map of yours. So, Slam did what he had to win his home map. He won Runestone, so all he needs to do is just win his own home maps, and he's going to win. Now we're going to one of the home maps of Fire, Acclivity or uh, Kawasan. So far we have seen the top two civil, top three civilizations of Fire used. Let's see what he comes up with. For Acclivity, that has to be Khmer or Incas, I believe. Because Meadow needs to be Berbers. And Closed is most likely... I think he might be saving Vietnamese for Enclosed. He might try to bait an Archer Sif pick from Slam for Enclosed just by having Saracens available. Because you would answer to Saracens by picking an Archer Sif like Ethiopians or Britons on Enclosed. And you could try to answer that using uh, Vietnamese. So there's a chance that we're going to see Saracens unused and the Vietnamese will go for Enclosed, Berbers for Meadow, Acclivity would go with Incas, and then Kawasan with Khmer, or the other way around. Both works, I believe. So, we are once again going to be forced to sit back and chill a little bit until they set up the next game. Uh, but they are fast, so I appreciate that they're trying to speed this up a little bit. So what are we going for? The next game is either Kawasan, as I said, or Acclivity. I have a feeling that Fire is in more of an Acclivity mood than Kawasan mood. Kawasan is a massively different game, or massively different map than what we have played so far. So I kind of feel like Fire is thinking more about Acclivity right now and just keep remaining on land maps domain. That's probably the most reasonable thing here for him to do. Yeah, that, that's the summary of Empire Wars. You leave for a moment and uh, suddenly it's gone. So, uh, let's see. It's gonna be Kawasan. So, I was wrong about that one. If it's Kawasan, the only two legitimate saves that Slam has for Kawasan are Hans and Chinese. Hans would be an interesting choice for Meadow. I feel like if it's not Hans right now, then Meadow is gonna be Kumans. But we could very well see Chinese being used here for Kawasan. Not because they have any special bonus for that map, it's just because that's the best Civ that Slam has left that is not used on other maps. We got Jay Warren 85 with the Prime sub. I appreciate it a lot. Welcome back. Well, not welcome back. Welcome as a new sub. Even better. Thank you so much. Where the No Mongo was in the pick? Uh, Hunt on a couple of maps looks good. Um, Sometimes you see them on, I think, Acclivity. When there is Hunt... The problem is that you are so much reliant on Hunt that if you don't get access to it, you just die. I think in the early days of Acclivity, players tried messing around with uh, Mongols on that map, but turns out that Mongols are not particularly good in Empire Wars. They only have the Hunt as their eco bonus, they don't have any bonus for their archers. Their cav archers are alright, but I mean... It's not that amazing. It, there are better civilizations with cav archers. Like Tatar's free tumbling is probably worth more in Empire Wars. So I kind of feel like uh, Mongols is sort of one of those civs that if you had a map that has a huge amount of hunt, then it would be a top Empire Wars civ. But unless you have a lot of guaranteed hunt, Mongols won't be a choice early on. Did I just miss a whole match in less than 20 minutes? Yes, you did. That is correct. We had an 8 minutes long Haboob game. So. 
with all of this said and done. The countdown is about to end for the next game. We're going to Kavasan to an interesting civilization matchup. That is Huns and Berbers. Interesting. So, Berbers is not something that fire reserves for Meadow, which means Meadow is going to be Khmer. But Berbers is the hard counter to Huns here, so maybe maybe his initial thought was that he could use Berbers on uh, Meadow if Slam goes for Huns over there. But he probably felt like, hmm, either you go Chinese here if you're Slam, or you go Hans, and Hans is still the more legitimate option for Kavasan, so I'm just gonna go for Berbers, which is a hard counter to your Civ. So, that strategy here could pay off for Fire, as we're going to see him on the right side of the map as Berbers in yellow. Left side is gonna be Hans for Slam in red, opening with a stable, building it with four wills, so he really wants to get a couple of scouts out early here. Uh, whereas on the other side, two villagers building the stable here for fire as well. No one is going for the pawns just yet. Eventually, if no one is contesting the pawns, you might go for them. But it's very similar to what we have seen on Atacama. It's not something that you always see. Still, this map is pretty aggressive and uh, pretty cutthroat. Because once you actually lose control over the middle, your opponent is going to have five relics available. Oftentimes you see Franks being played here for the sake of having the berry bonus. So, Franks is a popular pick here. Just TC the middle once you have map control. And you're gonna have pretty much infinite food from a pretty consistent and reliable source. Other civilizations can do that as well, but obviously their uh, gather rate from berries is much weaker. Looks like Slam actually does go for the dock here. On the left-hand side pawn, Par looks like he's not really doing that. He will just wall himself. He is uh, gonna have some concerns on the right side. I don't think that he knows that this is open. And if Slam finds that hole, he shouldn't go in right away. He should wait a little bit. It looks like Fire is going to check it out, though. Fire is gonna check it out, and he's going to see the scouts galloping into his eco. But at least he figured out there is a problem. So now he knows that he needs to plug that hole in ASAP. Still, considering that Slam is the aggressor, we are going to see fishing ships coming in here from Slam, completely untouched. He's just able to get the fishing income here in a pretty consistent and reliable uh, manner. Now, you got uh, Fire with the house here, and that should mean that Fire is fully walled. Since Fire actually went for uh, quite a lot of uh, spearmen here, and considering Fire is going Cavalry, I kind of feel like you can't just go Knights here with Huns, because you will be eaten by Camels. I think this is one of those triple range arch or triple range Cav Archer maps for Huns. Obviously, once Berbers get to Camel Archer, they will just stomp you. But probably what you want to do here with Huns is just go for triple stable Cav Archer or triple range Cav Archer, forward siege workshop, and finish the game before the opponent can go for... Uh, Camel Archers, and speaking of Camel Archers, look at this stone for fire. That is no Camel Archers for me, neither is this one. If Slam realizes what's going on, he could easily say that, hey, you would not really have a good answer to getting overrun by Cav Archers. I thought Huns don't need houses, that's correct, but in Empire Wars, every player spawns with the same amount of houses. So you see the population cap for Slam here is 200, but uh, as we have the villager, oh, Lady survives. That was pretty close and a fire galley pops out. Now fire knows that there is actually fishing eco here, but Lady will live. So this is just because the map always spawns the same for the players. Everybody spawns with houses, including Huns. Huns don't need that. The reason why they don't delete it is because it's still a nice part of your wall, right? So it pretty much forms an organic wall here, which helps immensely. There is the ranges for Slam. My boy with the triple range ar Cav Archers. Just good old-fashioned Cav Archer play. And considering that it's very hard for Fire to access stone here, this could be very troublesome for him. And this is where we have to highlight that this is Fire's home map. I did mention that he can't afford to lose his own home maps here. So, 
This is a must win for him, but he's gonna be in a rough spot because he won't have a direct answer to Cav Archers and he's very very late into Castle Age compared to his opponent. That's gonna be a solid minute and a half advantage for Slam as Fire brings in a couple of wills to get a dock up here. So the dock, this would actually kill the Fishing Geek of Slam, but Slam has already gotten the value for that, so even if he loses it, so be it. Because I think the next step is Cav Archers Forward Siege Workshop. You see there is a 120 difference between two players. We should even see a couple of knights here for Slam. Because his opponent can't make camels anytime soon. So a couple of knights could also be handy. But as you see, fletching, bloodlines coming in. Typical Cav Archer stuff. Slam didn't really bother trying to trap it in. And that's a fourth range. Whoa. We gotta pause here for a moment. But I, I certainly hope it's not the pause bug, because the pause bug did return, so it would be a disaster. Okay, thank goodness. In case you don't know what's going on, sometimes the game bugs out for spectators and you can't unpause it, even if you restart the game whatsoever. So I my heart stopped for a moment that we might have that in the tournament, but thankfully that wasn't the case. Alright, so Slam is in uh, Castle right now. Looks like Fire actually takes the right hand side point. He actually went for double dog fire galleys, but this is just an overinvestment here. Not sure why he decided to go double dogs immediately. I mean, I kind of get that he wants to fish boom, but it's gonna take some time until that fishing eco pays off. And do you know what Slam is or what Fire is gonna do? He's gonna go janitors. That's not gonna be skirms. That's triple range janitors. Also, Fire is able to sneak up a dog on the pond of Slam here. Slam apparently didn't notice this. He's looking for dogs, but he didn't check the entire coastline. That's why Fire went all the way out here to build it. If he builds it here, it's too obvious. You have to hide it over here. And I would say that when Fire gets into Castle Age, we should see some uh, Vorgali upgrade over here. He should be able to afford it. Castle Age and... Uh, and wait for it. Wait for it, janitors! Here they come. Now, the problem is that uh, Slam could send a Ford Roger and get a Siege Workshop up, so that you would already have Scorpions shooting at those janitors as well. Plus, it's harder to sustain consistent janitor production with Berbers than it is to sustain consistent Cav Archer production with Huns over here. It looks like Slam isn't messing around. He sees the janitors, he wants to commit to this one, he wants to finish this game right here, right now. So, we are gonna have quite a few villagers dying over here for fire, namely four. He will be able to retaliate on the left-hand side pond, so that's a good thing for him. And equal-wise, he can actually catch up once he kills those fishing ships over there on the left side, which is gonna occur now. But cleaning up those cav archers is gonna be a nightmare, and you see, you already have more cav archers coming in. The army is trapped in here, that's absolutely true, but... Honey cav archers are so cheap that you can actually afford to just trade them to villagers. And behind this one, Fire's economy has basically zero efficiency. So, villagers running left, villagers running right, scouts finishing off vills here. Sure enough, this army gets cleaned up, but Fire will have no tools to make more army. Because, look at this, all the villagers are dead, and you could easily get a couple of knights out now for slam, so that you can just deal with the janitors. That's probably the best thing to do. Fire will secure the left-hand side pawn. Right side pawn, Slam actually wants to get a dock up. As uh, Slam goes for Siege Workshop in the middle. He wants to go for uh, some Scorpions. Eventually, Fire gets this cleaned up. But look at this. 47 wheels compared to 35. This game might already be over. And we haven't even talked about the inefficiency. So it's one thing that everything got killed. No gold income for Fire. His farming eco looks like a mass. Barely any wood income for Fire. And there is going to be scorpions or probably battering rams as well soon. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Slam dropping a monastery and picking up those relics. When it's a 1TC build from both sides, those 5 relics could matter quite a bit. Slam actually gets the dock up here, but this is going to be a short-lived dock. I think at this point Slam needs to give up on water and just go for the game finishing move here. Ballistics will be in. And since fire doesn't have ballistics, the janitors are not guaranteed to counter the CA. With good micro, Slam could tear apart those janitors. Fire focusing those down, Slam will retreat to the hill as the first scorpion hits the field. 
Still no monastery for slam, but it looks like he has a fairly consistent production of cav archers on those ranges. As I'm saying that he's not producing anything. Instead, he turns it this into a boom. I think Slam knows exactly that his opponent lost so many wills that at this point, all you need to do for Slam is just to sit on this lead. Make sure that you just outboom your opponent because you already have a lead, you can just sit on it. Will you be casting uh, the Jordan set after this? Yes. Uh, I will be casting everything that's left today. So the two deciders won't overlap with each other. I will cast both. Here come the Janitors as a counterattack. But you see Scorpions are already over here. And I just kind of feel like, yes, even if Fire takes a good fight here, it's not going to be enough because there is Cav Archers moving in. And, okay, there is no hole there, but the Cav Archers could still maybe even deny that TC, at least for a time being. Second TC is up as well for Slam, so it's now a 12 villagers lead and it's just going to keep growing and growing. Spearman desperately trying to chase down these Scorpions, but I think the KD tells a lot about the game, 35 to 20, and the only reason why Slam lost a single economical unit is because he lost the fishing ships over here. Now, truth being told, Fire does have some fishing eco here on the right side, but honestly, the Cav Archers could deal with that. Does Slam know about that? He doesn't. This is pretty big. Slam, if he doesn't find this out, Fire can get away with quite a lot of fishing here. On the other hand, that is 25 Cav Archers now against 14 Janitors. And the thing with Janitors is that even if you win a battle against the Cav Archers, they don't do that much damage to Villagers. So it's not like you can just snowball the game with them, right? And there's a long wall section over here that's very open. Fire goes for University, but he can't afford Ballistics right now. He's gonna have to balance his eco for that a little bit. Here's the Janitor counterattack as Slam is already picking up the relics. Slam is playing with clinical precision, just like we saw him in the Sito set. He's really motivated to get to his uh, second Red Bull. He never won a single game in a Red Bull Volo main event, because he got 3 0 by Mr. Yo in Red Bull Volo 1, where he qualified, and hasn't qualified ever since. And honestly, that's so many Cav Archers that even the Janitors might not be enough to stop this. So... Yeah, but with Scorpion support, the Cav Archers can surely take that fight. And I think they will. Next wave of Cav Archers will hit the back of this wood line. Nice move from Fire Dote to use the Scout to take down the Scorpion. And I think Slam is playing this one cautiously, and I don't blame him for it. He doesn't want to throw away a lead. But he's got such a big lead that he could actually commit to this one. Scorpions, insane damage output against the Janitors. And what you should do here is detach free Cav Archers to just deny the farms. Use these to force the janitors back and use a couple of them to just deny the farms. Fire is struggling quite heavily for wood control because there is going to be cav archers hitting the back of this wood line over here. Scorpions as well. And behind this one, Slam is ahead by 14 wheels and he's going to have 5 relics in a moment. I don't see this one happening for fire. Slam is just playing too well. A crucial upgrade here for Slam, and I feel like that's a bit... I'm not sure if this is just a tilt for fire or desperation, but he was sending the Vios to take down the Scorpion here. Doesn't matter, honestly. E even if Slam loses this entire army over here, Slam's got the chance to just simply outboom his opponent, and Slam could just switch into full knights and overrun the janitors. In fact, I'm surprised that uh, Slam didn't do that. Looks like these Cav Archers will be trapped in here, but honestly, they can just keep running around a little bit more kill a couple more villagers, and that's even a bad move. That's a bad move from fire to open up that wall for the villagers to escape, because the Cav Archers almost had a chance to leave. And you see, yeah, these guys might get cleaned up, although it looks like the reinforcements will try to open up the wall for them. That wasn't ideal for Slam, but it, he's got such a big lead that he's able to absorb such a disaster, blunder, whichever you want to call it. Camo is now out for fire over here, but Slam has doubled the eco, and at this pace, Slam is about to click into Imperial in the next two minutes or so. There is a monk as well. Camo gets killed instantly, though. Scorpion also will have the chance to fire down hills. Now the Cav Archers have Tumbring, by the way, something that the Janitors do not have over here. Scorpions as well join the fun, and when you stack those Janitors up this much, the Scorpion is just going to be super happy about it. Monk also getting some healing in here. 
37 army against 15, 119 population against 66. This has just slammed Vlitton all over the place. And now Slam, I think, has spotted that there is some fishing here. He's just gonna send in the Cav Archers, take down the Fire Galleys, but we'll send up fishing off the fishing ships. And we're just getting closer and closer to Slam finishing off the game here. He could do it with a forward castle style approach. He could do it just going in. Looks like he's just gonna go in. He's actually going elite skirms, which is, I think, a bad choice. There could be much better options here for him. Not necessarily something that's a disaster, but I'm not really a fan of that. Fires up to three TCs in a moment, so he will try to reboom into this one as the cav archers try to hit the back of the wood line. Cav archers focusing down the gate because I think you can run in here. This is a risky move here for Slam, and he thinks twice before doing that. But, sure enough, you have the chance to run into the opponent's base now. Janitor is finally finding a couple of wheels here. As Slam, look at the Quake Gate. He's just going to delay those Janitors a little bit, and that's enough for his army to catch up. University Wall behind that one, very nicely done again by Slam. He's not really losing much, and... Uh, he is now going for elite skirms just to deal with those janitors another tc coming in for him for a total of four and now slam is making fire galleys soon to be fire ships to take down the fishing eco but most importantly slam is imping and i think at latest this is gonna be a gg when slam reaches imperial putting him to match point slam just feels so so confident today So, we are gonna have uh, the Mangonel going down here pretty easily. Some more Janitors are available for fire, so he's up to 21. Slam will need something against Janitors eventually. Looks like Slam doesn't really want to bother with that much, though. He just wants to go full CA. That's not something I appreciate, because I kind of feel like that's one way to throw away a game, that you are just refusing to make a counter unit, believing that you are that much ahead. But... Probably won't be that big of an issue for Slam because he is actually that much ahead. Especially if he finds those stone miners. Especially if he finds those stone miners and he sees the mining camp. He's gonna look for them. He sees that there is no hole on the wall. So I think he might know that someone is running to the left. But even if he doesn't, look at this. Cav archers will draw the attention of janitors on this side. And behind this one, Slam is picking off another few wheels on the wood line. 42 wheels killed by Slam, just 8 by fire. And Slam, with 4 TCs, he will be an imp in a moment. Whereas for fire, that's just a distant dream. In fact, I'm somewhat surprised that uh, Slam is not adding any siege. Against the janitor play, you could think about adding a couple of rams. Even cap ram could make some sense here. You don't even need siege ram. So, a couple of rams would actually help taking down these buildings immensely now. But it looks like Slam just wants to boom. And, as expected, upon seeing Slam hitting Imperial, Fire is going to press the Resign button. This game just went horrendous for Fire. In the moment those Cav Archers broke into his base and killed like 10-15 villagers, it was all downhills from that point on. And Slam just sat on his lead and said, okay, I don't need to do anything other than just Make sure I don't throw away this game. Relatively easy win here for Slam. And he takes away a home map for Fire. Making Fire's uh, chances pretty bad for the remaining of the series. Because Fire is going to have to win his final home map. And then take away the home maps of Slam. That's going to be really rough. Over here, you see the gradual decrease in Fire's population. But this is the time where he lost so many wills. So many wheels that from that point on, he was never able to recover his population share and he just got outboomed. So, that's basically it. Quick look at the APM graphs. They look pretty close. Slam slightly higher, I would say, for uh, overall 69 APM on average for Slam 66 for Fire. Fire had the civilization to beat Hans here. It was a matter of timings. Fire got beaten to Castle Age pretty heavily. And he got punished for being late very heavily. If he was up to Castle Age half a minute faster, he would have had janitors in, in sufficient quantity to stop those cav archers immediately. But such is life. As I said, uh, Empire Wars games can be very, very cutthroat in many cases.
All right. So that means that we have uh, a third point over here for fire. We're going to have uh, Kawas or third point here for slam. Kawasan is also in his hand and he has managed to win it with Huns. Berbers will be gone for fire. Match point in this one. Match point, ladies and gentlemen. So all we need from fire to keep the hope alive is a victory on his own home map, but that's easier said than done. Acclivity is the remaining map, which is... Uh, what is the Sif here for fire? Because I think Slam is gonna pick Ethiopians. Meadow will most likely be Kumans now for Slam if we get there. And Enclosed would be Britons or Ethiopians, but probably even Britons is slightly better. Although Activity could be Britons as well. So Activity or and Enclosed will be Britons and uh, Ethiopians most likely. So you're up against an Archer Civ. Incas might be the best shot here for Fire. Vietnamese is the alternative, but Vietnamese are also one-dimensional towards archers. It would be a nice trick from Slam to pick Chinese here. Because Chinese would give him a massive diversity of units. And it might be just as good when it comes to playing archers than Britons or Ethiopians. So I could vouch for Chinese here for Slam for the element of surprise a little bit. Whereas for Fire, I kind of have an Inca's wipe here. Otherwise, I don't see Incas being used elsewhere. Not on Enclosed, probably not on Meadow. So, um, let's see how they are doing with the game. We don't have the sixth one set up just yet. Okay, Krasini is saying Slam versus Fire has started. So let's jump in there. Let's hope that we can find the lobby over here. Hello? Game? Looks like the game needs to wake up here for a moment. Okay, I need to restart my game. I need to restart my game. So hold on for a moment. Looks like... Definitive Edition may have had enough. I've been casting for 7 hours now, and there is a lot more to come. There is two more best of 7s other than this one. Sorry, we'll probably be a couple moments late into the game, but we'll catch up, so no worries. We'll have the tools to catch up to the live feed. So, let's try this again. And it looks like my game is unable to open. Uh-oh. Let's hope that it works. Okay, now it works. It's just the game being disgustingly slow. There is definitely some server issues. Apologies for the delay. Because, uh, well... Servers are acting weird today. We're going to Acclivity as we discussed. We're gonna have Britons for Slam in red. And uh, we are gonna have Fire as Incas in yellow. So I was right about anticipating Incas. Britons is definitely a reasonable choice here. As uh, I mentioned, we'll probably have to catch up to the live feed. Which is gonna take a couple of moments. So, as things stand... It looks like we'll have a skirmisher opening. Can I actually slow this down? Hold on. Not really. 
So, okay, it's actually perfect. It is perfect. Now we're all good. So, we have just caught up to the live feed. We saw a couple of skirmishers coming forward. When you're up against Britons, you want to go heavy on the skirmisher play. Just because you know it's going to be archers from the Britons, and that's exactly what Fire is doing. He's preemptively going for a full archer counter, full eagles and skirmishers. He didn't even bother adding archers. Usually you add archers and eagles. He didn't even bother with that. And it looks like this will turn into a tower rush. Somewhat unconventional, but not a bad idea. So, a tower here would potentially deny the wood line and the gold mine. That would be an absolutely beautiful tower. And you know that Incas will have the initial momentum against Britons with the skirmishers and the eagles available. And as Slam loops around to hit the gold mine, probably for uh, fire over here, the tower will go up. And that means that Slam is going to have to run away. Slam already made a preemptive defensive tower, which means that he can't make another tower here. This is all beautiful for Fire until these archers arrive. I kind of feel like Fire might sense that there is something coming his way because he's sending skirms this direction, but that doesn't change the fact that Slam is going to have a window to get a couple of will kills here. There is uh, one, and now he tries to trap this army in here. He tries to trap the army, and he actually does. He is go Nope, that house foundation is not there. In that case, that's minus two villagers for Fire over here. In what is a... Deciding game in this set, maybe another Voyager Key for Slam. He's playing with clinical precision, and while sure enough that tower is annoying, Slam actually buys himself up to Castle Age. The reason why that's so important is because you need a Siege Workshop and that tower is gone. That's it. This could be it for Fire as well, because now it's looking pretty grim for him. He's not far away from picking up to Castle Age either, but Fire has lost three villagers, although Slam has lost two now. So, apparently those skirmishers were doing some work as well, because now it's 3-2 in terms of villager KD. But the thing is that when a siege workshop comes up here for slam, he is gonna be able to take down the tower pretty easily. After that we will see though, because looks like fire wants to continue with eagles, and fire is also buying himself up to castle age in a moment. He also takes some hunt, I appreciate that. You do something with these villagers, taking some hunt is definitely something that you can consider. So, Slam almost up to a castle right now. As we are going to have uh, all the skirmishers of fire over here getting cleaned up. Slam Scout is doing a lot of work here. That guy is just absolutely destroying the skirms. And the reason why that matters is because there's a couple of leftover archers that could hit the wood line. And those archers could definitely be valuable. You see that Slam is trying to focus down the skirm now, but the villagers are chasing. Nice reaction there by Fire. Fire picks off another villager here, so those skirmishers are, are surprisingly efficient when it comes to killing villagers here for Slam, as he's gonna go with the knights, also plays crossbowmen. Those Briton crossbows will have the 8 range, so they will be able to pick off those eagles from a distance. They will be able to pick off those villagers from a distance, as we have fire on the way to Castle Age as well. This tower is not walled in, so a single knight can deal with this one, and I think that's the plan. Here comes uh, Slam to push the wood line of fire. Fire is only double barracks, though. The problem when it comes to a tower rush with Incas is that you just don't really have a good eco behind that. And that's what we are seeing here. No eco upgrades for fire, no steward barracks. So he's going to struggle with production quite badly, and that could actually be a massive problem for uh, him. Look at how Slam is mining gold. This is extremely risky, but with the cheaper Briton TCs, he can actually get uh, a TC up there. Fire escorting the hunters from the outside. That's a nice move because his villagers were very exposed, and someone actually asked about Mongols in uh, one of the games before. If you can actually secure a lot of hunt guaranteed, Mongols is a good idea. So when Mongols played Acclivity, they did it like this. Males on the outside and just use the hunt. I like how Fire is also using that hunt quite a bit. Compensates a little bit for having a pretty weak economy. But now you have a bunch of idols here because these villagers cannot go back to safety. Eagle Warrior is coming in for Fire. He has a lot of males, by the way. He has an awful lot of males 
in here and that's a bit of a premature move from fire sending out the villagers to make that lumber camp because guess what that knight could easily just kill two villagers and be done for it so skirms coming in no elite skirm upgrade with uh, no bot canaro either it's gonna be full eagles now and i think as weird as it sounds like just like the first game it was long swords this might be a long swords game as well for uh, slam slam also gets another voyager kill here so now it's six free and uh, we have a free villagers lead for slam who apparently isn't really bothered by that tower right now he needs to clean it up eventually and other crossbows are heading around oh my goodness this could be perfect for slam he doesn't have ballistics so the villagers if they see this they can run but slam sees the gold miners and you see slam is not shooting immediately he is trying to close the distance before alerting fire this time around fire sees that those crossbows are coming so he will actually make a run for it but that's minus two villagers and potentially even more because there is a knight here as well eagles coming from the back though so those crossbows will have a tough time but for this many villager kills i feel like slam is very happy that he was able to just get this much value for those couple of crossbows in here so now you got uh, the eagles cleaning up the crossbowmen and you see crossbows just trying to get as much damage done as possible killing a couple more villagers here is uh, probably the plan they're trying to focus down the last vill but i think this guy might survive remember this guy has a lot of armor because he's an inca villager with all the upgrades so what now for slam he's apparently going for double stables but it looks like i'm not going to say his signature move because it's not like he has been using it very, very frequently. It's more like this is the move that won him the first game, Long Swords. Long Swords might win him the game again. Although I feel like he should have destroyed this tower a long time ago. He's got five knights, send it here, destroy the tower, secure that wood line. Because he is struggling really badly with wood control. And there is an overchop here as well that could allow the Eagles to run in. Slam will try to fix that. One lady gets left out of the party over here. Quick was once again coming in for Slam. Last moment Quick was. For him he's having a really hard time getting his uh, wood eco going that is because he's sending his knights to counter attack fire and not come in here if those knights came in here they would be able to destroy this army pretty easily this lady look at this there is an imposter among us so we got the egos coming in and the thing is that Eco is much better for Slam, 53 versus 42, but look at how many idols. Slam has 34. Slam has 34 idols right now. The knights are coming in once again, but there is nothing to raid over here. And uh, guess what? The eagles are just knocking on the door. Now, Slam has basically no functional economy. Consistently 20 idols, and the eagles won't care about that tower. The eagles won't care about that TC. Slam is going for Long Swordsman now, but it might be too late in this case. And Fire looks like he's going to recover and he's gonna go to on to win this game. Because I don't see I don't see Slam being able to come back now. His entire economy is idle and he's just gonna lose a massive amount of wills. It is 5 army versus 40. And as I said, Eagles won't care about the TC Fire. Fire is more than happy to just lose... 10 eagles and kill 15 20 villagers over here villager count evening out 41 population versus 83 we are in for a game number six over here ladies and gentlemen swift strike from fire and this is why incas are still legitimate uh, in empire wars many people are asking what's the point of picking incas the point of picking incas is eagles because eagles you can mess them while you're going up to castle age it's much harder to convert them so in many ways an eagle play can be stronger than a knight's play when it comes to being able to just raid the opponent. And it looks like the Britain's pick here was somewhat anticipated by Fire. He went for a civilization that's pretty decent in matchup versus uh, the Britons. And it wasn't really the Tower Rush that won it. The thing that won it for him was that uh, Slam went for crossbows with Britons, which is the obvious thing to do, but then Britons have no answers to Eagles. Long Swordsman would have been an answer, but by that time Slam was overrun. And while the Tower Rush didn't win the game entirely for fire, it definitely denied the gold and the wood. And that meant that Slam had a hard time accessing wood. He was chopping over here, 
he was harassed by skirms. He was chopping over here, harassed by skirms. And this is why, in retrospective, instead of counterattacking with the knights over here for slam, it may have been better to just try and destroy that tower. I think that's what where he should have started at. So that he reclaims those resources. And uh, that way he would have had some additional gold and some additional wood. It would have been harder for him or harder for his opponent to just stretch out the defenses of Slam. Because this way all the resources were pretty much denied. Alright, that means that we have uh, a close set over here. Fire now has to take away two home maps from the opponent. Not impossible, but not easy either. Britons is something that's now gone for Slam, and Incas gone for Fire. Acclivity, the final home map of Fire, is actually going to go into his hand, whereas uh, for uh, Slam, we are left with Enclosed and Meadow as the home maps. So, Enclosed and Meadow you have Ethiopians that, that has to be the civilization for uh, Enclosed. And this is why I think that Fire's got a good matchup there. He's got Vietnamese. And I think Slam knows that. Slam knows that there is trouble. Because the thing is that Fire just wanted to make sure that Slam retains Ethiopians or Britons for Enclosed. Because then he wants to pick uh, Vietnamese. You kind of have to have an archer sieve there. Because otherwise Saracens could cause serious problems. This would mean that we're going Meadow with Khmer versus potentially Kumans. That's going to be an interesting Civ matchup over there. Khmer is guaranteed because that's the only fast civilization that Fire has left. And you need a fast civilization there. Plus you can jump into houses, something that I really like on Meadow. Whenever I have to play that map, I usually go for Khmer. I think that's a very underrated bonus when it comes to protecting your wood lines that you can jump into houses. What about Chinese on Enclosed? Um, I was considering that. Now that you see, like, now that Slam sees that Fire's got these civilizations left, Chinese might be a slightly better option. Because at least they have more diversity, so they might have slightly better options against Vietnamese. You probably don't want to go for, like, a one-dimensional archer sieve like Ethiopians against a sieve that's gonna have Rattan archers. That's, that's a no-no to me, so... I can see Chinese being a pick from Slam here, because if he's anticipating Vietnamese. Alright, next game, Forest Nothing, or well, more precisely, it is gonna be Meadow, and Slam brings a surprise over here. I did not expect that. Slam is picking Ethiopians. Now, there is a lot to love about Ethiopians. For example, the free pikeman upgrade is very, very handy. Fire is gonna go for the predictable Khmer here. But I have serious doubts about uh, the ability of Ethiopians to catch up with the mobility of Khmer. And you could say, hey, you could push the woodlands of fire with archers. Excuse me? Fire can make a defensive tower, fire can jump into houses. You will never be able to push the woodlands of fire with archers here for Ethiopians. And... Other than that, they just lack mobility for anything. I don't like the Ethiopian choice by any means here for Slam. That doesn't mean that he doesn't have a shot with that. The win condition is that he needs to be very aggressive and really capitalize on uh, the fact that uh, he could get the free pikeman upgrade, play very aggressive and just try to deny the gold around the town center. That's probably the best scenario here for... Uh, Slam, we are going to have him on the left side as Red Ethiopians, and on the north, we are going to have Fire as a Yellow Khmer. Here comes the stable for the Khmer player, and exactly what you need to do. Make a house on all key resources. For every five villagers you have, make a house. Fire, also moving out to mine... What, what is he doing here? Is he going for the pond? Oh, that's smart. There is some shorefish here. It's not an awful lot, but shorefish is a very, very nice and reliable food source. Nope. He's looking for the hunt. He was looking for the hunt here. That's why he went for it. So fire for now, not protecting his wood line. You see the reaction of Slam. Immediately after the start of the game, he's going to start walling off his wood line because he knows exactly that eventually scouts will arrive and hit his wood line. In this one, 
defensive tower coming up for fire initially, but there will be some houses as well as uh, the scouts come in. Slam actually vault his villagers on uh, the berries. So there is not really a lot of surface to attack here for fire, honestly. Really, most of the villas are already well protected, or at least those that aren't will soon be fully walled as well. So, I don't know how much value you can get out of those scouts for fire, so I would say that you might even try stopping to make the... Okay, fire is mining stone because he already made a tower. I was confused for a moment. So, you probably don't want to invest very heavily into scouts as long as you don't know how much damage you can cause with them. But an archer range for skirms would make quite a lot of sense. Or a tower. That's a tower from fire. That's a tower and that could work so well. It needs to time up perfectly, but if it does, holy potatoes, that could be a game-winning move there. The archers and spears are coming towards fire's woodland. He can actually jump into the tower with five over here, and you can use five to jump into that house. Plus, Khmer have a good eco behind this one as well. So, what fire needs to do is get a tower up here and... Just try to take on the fleeing villagers. Look at this, what Slam is doing, though. He's blocking the escape path, and that's one villager down. Wait, that's fire deleting the villa, right? That was a villager dead there. There had to be. Hold on for a second. Someone died there. And it wasn't killed by the archers. Yeah, this lady got deleted by fire. Because he wanted to delete the lumber camp so that he can actually escape. That's actually a cost loss. That's a very, very costly loss because that's the second villager down. And that scout blocking the escape path to the house is just so massive here for uh, Slam. This way, he actually secures a pretty massive villager lead because Fire also has quite a lot of idle time on his TC. He's waiting for one moment to strike, although that moment might have just come because Slam is moving out with villagers and... Uh, that's quite a lot of scouts as well with plus one defense. Archer is now coming in to do some harassment over here as Fire is going to be forced to retreat. Slam almost ready to click up to Castle Age as the tower goes up. That tower must do a lot of damage because if not, then Fire is in trouble. Fire could be in serious trouble if uh, that tower doesn't do enough damage. And I think that Slam has enough Spearman to defend here. Slam seems to have enough because Fire is unable to really get any kills. He actually managed to get one villager kill over here, but this tower is not enough. A second tower might actually do the trick at letting those scouts go in. But this is sort of an all-in style play here from uh, Fire. Slam behind this one is pretty close to clicking up to Castle H. He just needs a market. Slam now going for the tower himself to keep his wood line alive as he's buying the food he needs. He has clicked up. This is the place where he's the most vulnerable at. We talked about this before. That clicking up to Castle Age is the time frame where you're the most vulnerable. So this is the time where Fire is going to have to utilize the mobility of his scouts, keep raiding, and just tear apart Slam's eco. Otherwise, Slam will take the uh, sixth game here. And with that, would move on to the next round. So... Now Fire is going for uh, skirmishers to defend here. There is definitely an overberry over here, or, well, overpick on the berries. You see, Slam isn't actually worried about that one. Was in the villagers, nice move as well for him. Slam is really playing well in this one. Another tower comes in, but this feels like a kamikaze tower here from Fire, because I think that the archers could just stop it as it is. The scouts trying to come in from the other side, and Slam will play with... Uh, Knights in this one. He's on double stables. Tower goes up for slam. Tower goes up as well for uh, fire. But fire could potentially use his scouts at the bottom of the tower just to kill that one. So far, fire isn't able to do much with his uh, scouts over here. And slam is relentlessly progressing towards castle age. Meanwhile, those archers could potentially camp the bottom of the tower now for slam. It looks like he has missed that opportunity. Bloodlines on the way for... Uh, Fire as well. I think that it's not even gonna be a lot of knights at the beginning for Slam. He will just make Ethiopian camels. Those aren't amazing, but they are good enough to deal with the first couple of scouts over here. Slam is also doing a mass migration, and guess what? 
that slam that's probably gonna buy 100 stone and drop a tower here by the way this wood line looks so oddly shaped you could perfectly fit a tower in here and deny the entire thing unlike the one from well you could possibly do a tower here as well if you're fire right now fire trying to get into the wood line once again that's his only hope right now he needs to kill a bunch of villagers just like the atacama game but as i said now it's pikeman it looks like slam is just making knights no camo whatsoever so tower versus tower is up over here but the knights are now heading towards the base of uh, fire and the archers will camp the bottom of the tower nice quick fall over there by fire to prevent the knights from running in but that's not gonna be sufficient and now fire is forever futile he can't do anything if he starts making units to fight this one those are gonna be inefficient fights because he's fighting against castle age units he's gonna have a lot of idle eco he's not never gonna reach castle age and eventually will be ground down by the better units of his opponent right now fire's chances of winning this one is less than one percent i would say it would take a massive massive throw from uh, slam to actually lose this game you see that how many scouts those knights can take down but you see that that's the only hope that fire has right now fire has barely any wood income it would help immensely for him by the way to just wall this in because right now he's facing knights meanwhile these free four villagers will probably also get intercepted look at that quick wall coming in from slam he just wants to make sure those villagers not do not escape that's another free wheels down so a total of eight villagers have been killed so far by slam he's got a five villagers lead and he's in castle age whereas uh, for fire as i said forever feudal the only hope for fire is that he can actually get like a massive over chop run in with scouts and kill 15 20 villagers to even things out no other chances there i think for fire and now there is an opening here so if those scouts ever find a way in that could be interesting fire is looking for docks he's probably like how does my opponent have the resources to go up and still outproduce me in army so here come the scouts as i said this might be the only hope for fire i think there is a hole here killing five six seven villagers would be sufficient maybe to at least give a shot for fire but i mean on the other side fire is gonna lose the same amount of villagers and he can't even reseed farms fire is so dead here he can't reseed farms because he doesn't have wood income so i feel like especially if this one is a failure that that's the end of the story for him and it's gonna be a failure because those house foundations will block it slam has nine villagers lead and he's in castle age fire is struggling to even reseed farms slam has an extremely high chance of moving into the next round of red bull Wololo 5 qualifiers the final round he's gonna be as close as it gets to qualifying for the main event slam has been playing really clean today as uh he's also picking up the relics he might lose the monk here but come on does it matter at this point look at this he just stomping for i probably would have resigned by now in this game were it not the last one but at this point fire probably knows that he's behind like fire's score is not that low so maybe fire thinks that there is a chance but realistically speaking there isn't really there's gonna be a second tc from slam and he's gonna do the exact same thing as he did in the kawasan game he did enough damage he's just gonna sit on his lead now as he should he's also gonna pick up five relics so every single detail will be in the favor of slam and fire is still not up to castle age like at this point just buy your way up to well oh this is the problem this is the problem here for fire you could buy the resources for castle but he doesn't have wood for a market he never had wood for a market he could never buy wood so that he could drop farms he didn't have a market now the scouts find a couple of villagers over here but it's not enough it's not enough over here fire is he making a market yes he is He's trying to buy himself up, but I feel like this game is too far gone now. So, at this point, Fire has pretty much consumed all of his farms. There is one chance. That's a less than 1% chance here. If Fire goes mass spearmen, 
with pikemen upgrade and then goes for a castle drop. His odds are very small here, obviously. But his opponent is mostly nice, there is no overchop here, so a couple of villagers will once again die. You see, the price of food is also insanely high. 204 gold for 100 food is just brutal. Could he even get castle? He can't even get castle, it's just so expensive. Both players are buying food, so the prices are up in the sky. Oh my goodness. Just end it already, this game is over. Like, Fire will never win this game from Feudal Age. Slam will just sit on 15 million TCs and just boom. So, PC going up over here as well. Slam is gonna secure that gold mine, and I mean, at some point, Slam is just gonna switch back to Crossbowman and start marching forward, but doesn't even have to, that's the funny thing here. Slam doesn't have to do anything to win this game right now. Just sit back and wait. Look at Fire's economy. Zero on wood, three on food, 16 on gold. He's about to consume all his gold. Like, this game might last until Fire is just going to run out of minerals here on this hill. Because the only thing that's protecting him from complete annihilation is that PC on top of the hill. Nothing else. So, we got some more scouts coming in here. Talk about market abuse. Fire still can't actually get to castle. The food price is so ridiculously high. 235 gold for 100 food. Probably doesn't help that he's still making scouts. I swear if he comes back into this one, that's gonna be the sickest comeback I've ever seen. He's trying to go for a uh, light calf play eventually, but it would be easier for him to just get up to castle age first. Because at least then he could buy himself a TC and just TC this one. It's This is sort of the game where Slam isn't really motivated to finish off the game because he has such a big lead. On the other hand, Fire is not motivated to resign because uh, this is the final game if he resigns right now. But Slam will just boom on 1 billion town centers. He's got 5 relics as well, so really... If you look at the overall resources gathered, I'm just gonna quickly pull that up because there is nothing else happening anyways. 16k versus 13k. Now Fire finally going for a mass migration. So... Oh, look at that! Castle Age! Castle Age! Does he have the buildings? He does. Fire is not giving up. Now I'm gonna look like a dumb dumb if I... Uh, if Fire ends up winning this. And it's gonna be a massive throw from Slam if Fire ends up winning this. It's an 18 villagers lead for Slam, pretty confident, pretty decent map control. He also has a bunch of relics. So there should be no win condition here for Fire. But Slam has to be cautious. Slam probably should be able to get to Imperial soon and I see... Switch back into Archers, it is. With Ballistics coming in soon. I assume that we're going to see a bunch of crossbows coming out and then forward castle from Slam. Although, he might just go for defensive castle. So, might just continue to boom and go for defensive castle around this area. But probably his best bet would be to get a couple of crossbows out. A couple of camels. Probably camel crossbow is a decent combo right now for him. And castle drop this area. Deny the wood line as it is. And Slam is coming in for a castle. Slam is coming in for a castle. Where is it at? He hasn't placed it yet, but that's so many villas that it cannot be for anything else. It's only scout still for fire. Still 25 seconds left until castle age. He probably wants to grab the light cap upgrade, but I mean, there's spike pen, there's camels. This force is not enormous though. So Slam has to be careful. He still has an enormous lead. But... Yeah, he needs to finish this game off soon. Lightcap Pikeman coming in. There is the castle. If this castle goes up, it's game over. And Fire probably tries to delay this one as much as possible. So that he can actually get the Lightcap upgrade. But Slam is gonna place it. This might be even better because it probably does more to harass this woodland than the previous one was. Scouts... 
Now light cav. This is the time for fire to fight. This is the time to fight and the camels are doing a beautiful job blocking the light cavalry over here. 70% I think it's enough for slam. It's enough, right? He isn't really focusing down the wheels, so I think it will be enough. 95? Yes, it is. Had fire focus down the wheels, this wouldn't have been enough. This was insanely close for slam. Closer than what it should have been. If fire actually uses those light cap that were just beating the castle from the other side before and focuses down the building wheels, this could have turned into a doubt castle. Would it have mattered? Probably not. This game was long over. So, I kind of feel like this game was over, like, right here. But, with that, Slam gets to the next round. What an underwhelming final game to an otherwise very, very good and competitive set. Slam is looking really strong in this one, although it looks like he might have gotten tired a little bit by the end of this one. He's gonna have uh, some time to rest, because I think their uh, decider game is actually the one that starts later. So, congrats to Slam, he has one more player to get through, and that is the winner of Bakhti versus Bars, before he could actually get to the main event of Red Bull World 5.